15 things you didn't know about reno. Welcome to alux.com, the place where future billionaires come to get inspired. Hello Aluxers and welcome to another exciting original video presented by Alux.com. Today we're revealing some interesting and surprising facts about Renault, one of the longest running and most successful French automobile brands in history. The Renault Corporation was established in 1899 by brothers Louis, Marcel and Fernand Renault, and the first Renault car, called the Renault Voiturette 1CV, was actually sold in 1899. Renault's major focus in the early years was motor racing and the brand made a name for itself by Marcel and Louis successfully competing in a number of races. However, after Marcel was tragically killed in the 1903 Paris-Madrid race, Louis never raced again, although the Renault brand remained heavily involved in the sport. After the First and Second World War, Renault was owned by the French government and it successfully expanded production with cars like the incredibly popular Renault 4. In 1996, Renault became a privatized company, although the French government still owns about 20%. In 1999, Renault and Nissan signed an alliance, with Renault taking a 36.8% share in Nissan. Renault has since acquired a 70% stake in the South Korean-based Samsung Motors and a 25% share in Avtovaz, Russia's leading car manufacturer. Renault has laid out an ambitious plan for the future with a major focus on electric and autonomous vehicles. Renault has produced over 45 models sold under three brands in 125 countries, and it's clear that this nearly 120-year-old company does not intend to be left behind in the ever-changing automobile industry. If you're new here, welcome! Be sure to subscribe and follow us on Instagram at Alux. We are inspired by Renault's commitment to innovation, creative spirit, ambitious nature, and a long-running history. So let's take a closer look at this French car giant with these 15 things you didn't know about Renault. Number 1. Renault won the first ever Grand Prix The race that is widely regarded as the first ever Grand Prix was held at Le Mans in 1906. A total of 32 cars competed in a 64-mile circuit broken into two days, six laps completed in the first day and the final six completed the following day. The winner of the race was driving a Renault AK90CV. Number 2. The Renault Trésor was named the 2016 Concept Car of the Year. Renault's all-electric supercar called the Trésor was introduced for the first time in September 2016 at the Paris Motor Show. In March of 2017, the car was named the 2016 Concept Car of the Year at the Geneva Motor Show. The Trésor is powered by two batteries located at the front and the rear of the car. There are hexagonal vents in the hood that move up and down as the air circulates, which gives the impression the car is breathing. It can go from 0 to 60 in just 4 seconds with 350 horsepower, and it can also drive in autonomous mode. Number 3. The Renault Clio is the best-selling French car in automotive history. The Renault Clio was launched in 1990 and has consistently been one of the best-selling cars in Europe ever since. It is the number one best-selling car in France, with more than 13 million sold to date, and it's also the best-selling French car in automotive history. Number 4. CEO Carlos Ghosn made over $17 million in salary back in 2016. Carlos Ghosn, the current chairman and CEO of Renault, is widely regarded as one of the most respected and hardest working executives in the automotive industry, and also is among the highest paid. Before stepping down as CEO of Nissan back in April of 2017, he was making $9.8 million a year there. He also earned $7.89 million as the CEO of Renault, and an undisclosed amount for being a chairman of the Mitsubishi Motors Corp. One auto CEO that does make more than him is General Motors CEO Mary Barra, who received $28.6 million in salary and perks in 2016. Number 5. Renault commissioned a record-breaking work of art. Anamorphic art is a form of art that distorts the perspective of the viewer to make objects appear to be in 3D when they are really just two-dimensional. 
In 2013, Renault commissioned a 43,820 square feet anamorphic print that earned a Guinness World Record for largest artwork of its kind in the world. The print presents an aerial view of a city and rural area that gives pedestrians the feeling that they are walking on a glass bridge over mountains, water, and skyscrapers. The incredibly detailed print took five months to create, and it's located in the Lyon city center in France. Number 6. Renault, Nissan, and Mitsubishi have invested a combined $5.16 billion in 12 electric vehicles. Renault, Nissan, and Mitsubishi have decided to combine their efforts and resources to launch 12 new all-electric vehicles by 2022 with an investment of $5.16 billion. The companies are already linked together because Renault owns a large portion of Nissan, and Nissan has effective control of Mitsubishi, but they typically operate as three separate companies. The companies unveiled a new logo to represent their alliance. The Alliance has committed to producing 12 all-electric vehicles, and Renault will be responsible for 8 of them. Number 7. In the early years, Renault's primary business was manufacturing taxis. In 1905, Renault turned their focus to producing a fleet of taxis, and by 1907, most of the taxis in London and Paris had been built by the company, and they had the highest percentage of foreign brand taxis used in New York City as well. Their taxis were also used by the French military to transport troops in World War I. In 1908, the Renault brand produced 3,575 vehicles, making it France's largest car manufacturer. Number 8. The first Renault vehicles were a luxury only the very rich could afford. In the early 1900s, Renault was producing cars at a time when owning a car was a luxury. Even the most inexpensive Renault vehicle was over 3,000 francs, which was an amount equal to 10 years' pay for the average French worker at the time. Number 9. Renault created one of the most revolutionary tank designs in history. During World War I, Renault expanded its production to include ammunition, military aircraft engines, and military vehicles like the Renault FT tank. The Renault FT tank is sometimes referred to as the world's first modern tank, and its layout of crew compartment in the front, engine compartment in the back, and main armament in a revolving turret became the standard tank layout that is still used today. Number 10. Renault plans to introduce the RoboTaxi by 2022. Renault is returning to its roots by working on a new fleet of taxis. They plan to introduce their first self-driving RoboTaxi by 2022, with the ultimate goal to establish a driver-free robo-vehicle ride-hailing service to compete with Uber. If you want to learn some interesting facts about the current most popular ride-sharing service, click in the upper right-hand corner to watch our video of 15 things you didn't know about Uber. Number 11. Renault's plant was one of the most heavily targeted areas during World War II. During World War II, Nazi forces took over Renault's factory, but Louis Renault refused to produce tanks for the Nazis. However, the factory did produce many trucks for the Nazis, which made it a target of the Allied forces. On March 3, 1942, the British Royal Air Force launched 235 low-level bombers at the plant, which was the largest number aimed at a single target during the war. The plant was destroyed when 460 tons of bombs were dropped on the plant and its immediate surroundings. There were also many civilian casualties. Renault attempted to rebuild the factory, but it was bombed three more times by the American military. After the liberation of Paris, the factory was able to be rebuilt. Renault continues its connection with film by being a sponsor of the Cannes Film Festival since 1983, as well as other film festivals, including the Venice Film Festival and the BFI London Film Festival. Number 13. Renault plans to increase production 44% by 2023. In 2017, Renault CEO Carlos Ghosn announced Renault's five-year business plan, which the company has called Drive the Future. The plan is heavily focused on all-electric and autonomous vehicles, and market expansions are planned for virtually every market except one, North America. Instead, there is a particular focus on the markets in Russia, China, Brazil, and India. 
Renault is currently the ninth biggest automobile company in terms of production, but plans to increase production volume by 44% by 2023 to sell 5 million cars per year. If they're successful, they expect revenue to jump from $209 billion to $256 billion. Number 14. Renault is designing a car that doubles as a spare room for your home. The concept car called the Symbios was introduced in September of 2017 at the Frankfurt Motor Show. The car's batteries are stored flat in its floor, and the car drives on its own, so the front seats can fully rotate so all occupants can interact face-to-face -face while traveling. When not on the road, the car is meant to be parked inside the home to act as an extension of the living space. Renault has also introduced a concept house that demonstrated how the car could be lifted up by an elevator to the second floor or to the rooftop where a glass sunroof could offer a full view of the sky. The home charges the car automatically and the car is also able to supply electricity to the home. Renault says the car and home would work symbiotically to anticipate the needs of the owner. Renault hopes to make the concept available by 2030. Number 15. Pope Francis was given a 1984 Renault as a gift. In 2013, Pope Francis was given a 1984 Renault 4 with 186 miles on it as a gift from a parish priest. Pope Francis said that it pains him to see priests driving flashy cars, so he was delighted by the gift. Other cars the priest has traveled in include a Ford Fiesta, Ford Focus, and Fiat Idea. The Pope reportedly uses the Renault 4 to drive around the Vatican. Renault has some very ambitious plans for the future, and now that you've learned some more about the brand, how successful do you think they'll be in achieving them? Let us know what you think in the comments. Still here? Here's a bonus fact just for you. The Clio is one of only three cars to have been voted European Car of the Year twice, in 1991 and again in 2006. The only other two cars that achieved that honor were the Volkswagen Golf and the Opel Astra. Thank you for spending some time with us, Aluxer. Make sure to subscribe so you never miss a video. If you want more, we handpicked these videos you might enjoy, or head over to alux.com for the best in fine living content on the planet. Be a part of the largest community of luxury enthusiasts in the world and tell your story.